Well, my name's Mike Romani. Uh, I've been working in Haiti for the past nine months on a uh, economic slash health uh, geared project. I'm working for an NGO known as Amort, which stands for Ananda Marga Universal Relief Team. They usually work mainly in the area of doing relief projects, uh, like during the tsunami, they had a lot of people on the ground distributing food. But in Haiti, they have uh, a wide array of uh, developmental projects, and I'm helping them work on a salt production uh, facility. So that's what I've been doing down there for the past nine months. In this area in Haiti that we're in, there's a lot of people who own their individual salt basins. They harvest salt from the sea and they sell it. In 2004, a hurricane came through and it really destroyed a lot of the salt basins. So around 2005, when Amort first came in, one of the first biggest projects they had was to help rebuild the salt basins for each individual person. That way they could, uh, you know, revitalize the industry and, and, and find their source of income again. Um, but since then, uh, we caught the interest of POM, who's also WFP, the World Food Program, and MI, who's Micronutrient Initiative, they're based out of Canada, I believe. They are also trying to help uh, Haiti with their issues of iodine deficiency. They're one of the last 19 countries in the world that still have problems of iodine deficiency. Um, basically what that means is people aren't finding ways, or they're not finding the right foods that will help them get iodine into their bodies. And one of the uh, easiest ways to get iodine into the body in a way that the body can process it is through salt. And so the idea came about, well, hey, you know, if Amort is already working with the salt producers in Haiti, why don't we try to, the WFP and MI are saying, why don't we try to partner with you to try to figure out a way that we can help combat this uh, iodine deficiency problem in the country. So they hashed out a plan that um, they decided that we would have to build modern salt production facilities because the way that the traditional salt basins create the salt, there's a lot of magnesium in the salt. And if there's magnesium in the salt, you can't iodize the salt properly. Um, the iodine will, will leak out of the salt through uh, processes of evaporation. Amor got together with WFP and with MI and they decided, hey, we should make an industrial sized salt production facility. So we've been working on a 125 acre salt production facility that it will have the potential once it's 100% it's operational to provide Haiti with 20% of the salt demands. And all of our salt will be magnesium free and will be iodized. So we're hoping that we'll be able to get this out through distribution, through POM, through WFP to the people who need it most. For as my living conditions, Compared to where I came from, compared to living in, uh, I was living in Queens and Flushing, which is a very nice area of the city, to living there, it's, oh my God, a drastic reduction in living standards. I'm living in a place, well, we just got power from solar panels about a month ago, but before that, without power for eight months, um, without running water, without toilets, basically me and my wife, we have to sleep on the floor. The only thing we have in our room is the net that covers us. Um, and the food there, since we live in a very, the area is highly deforested, it's a desert, you can't get any food. We've been eating eggplant every day for the past nine months. So coming from the perspective of somebody who's native to the U.S. and New York, it's very difficult. But, I mean, compared to the standards of everybody else that live right next to us in the village we live in, we actually live, uh, we have some high, you know, very high standards of living. As for my daily daily work experiences, that, that again is something that this you really have to experience for yourself. This, this country is a wonderful country. The people there have a level of energy that you could never ever imagine. Um, some days I'm on the field and I literally have up to 500 or 600 people working with me. And again, we're building a salt production facility that's 125 acres, so you can imagine it's very large and it's all built from the earth. We basically are taking clay from the earth and constructing it into a like a, a waffle type structure for the water to pass through and all of it is done by hand. Um, I really can't imagine that a factory has ever been built like this anywhere else where the whole entire thing was done by hand. We had an Indian consultant who came down and designed it and he says that usually they do everything with backhoes and with machinery but uh, it's actually not available there in the area we are in. It's, it's very difficult to access type of machinery. So our plan at first was to use manual labor and to use machinery but because of certain complications, the machinery never showed up and we just continued to pay the contracted workers and, and they've, they've just about completed the entire factory in a matter of six months and it's really a mind-blowing thing because to come and see that this was done by hand, you couldn't believe it, you couldn't imagine it. 
So these people are really, you know, incredibly hardworking and it's been an honor to be able to be with them and work with them. Right before I went down there, I had just graduated. I got my MBA in project management and this was an opportunity for me to step immediately into a management position I was offered to help be the uh, assistant manager um, of, of the, uh, the construction of the factory. So to me, this was like a great opportunity to get a lot of experience. Um, due to the hurricanes that passed through in 2008, there were four hurricanes, the guy who was the head manager immediately left the post and I actually became the, the lead manager, but that wasn't part of the original plan. So actually, I got a lot more experience than I thought that I would have gotten. So that was one big aspect. I wanted to get experience in the field of project management. The other aspect was just, uh, I really need to see the world. I mean, I'm coming from a place, like I said, uh, where I've always had a place to stay. I've always had food to eat. I've always had things ready, f you know, at my disposal that I could, I could, I could keep living every day. And I wanted to see what the rest of the world looked like, was like and the way the rest of the world was living. So this was a great opportunity and very eye-opening for me to go down there and see that the rest of the world isn't like Flushing and the rest of the world isn't like upstate New York or New York or the U.S. in general. That people are really getting by somehow on $1, $2 a day. And it's really been an experience to be down there with them. I've learned a lot. Probably the most important thing that I've learned is that... Uh, well, in Haiti, there's a lot of obstacles for everything. Like I said, even getting the construction material we needed to build this factory. We've been trying and we've been buying it. And for whatever reason, it's not showing up or it breaks down or there's no transport. There's no, the place is like a moonscape. There's no paved roads. So it's hard to get anything there. So what I've found is that no matter all the obstacles that are placed in front of us, each obstacle you can pass just as long as you have the uh, just as long as you have the, the will to get past it you're going to get past it that anything that you want to achieve is achievable it's just you have to you have to know that you have that within yourself to achieve that so i'm, I'm basically leaving there seeing things that i would have said were impossible that we can never achieve being achieved and being realized and and even down on the simplest level there the people i don't know how they get food i don't know how they survive i literally can't explain how they get by on a day a dollar a day but they do so it's it's just been a learning experience in that way that I've seen that you know you can you can get by on what you got as long as you got the will to get by